Well, here we are. We now have our mission, which is to acquire the four keys to the Mother Load, and hopefully nothing terrible will happen when we do. This is the point where I believe Mega Man Legends 2 truly gets started, because now we get to island exploration, all this dungeon crawling, and we're actually going to get to an optional dungeon today. But first, we have some weapons to develop, and we have uh, things to check on. The repairs are done, so now we can get into the living room, and we can also start buying a bunch of extra stuff for the Flutter. Uh, there are a ton of items you can get, but the only one that's actually practical is the refrigerator, and we're going to go check out why that is. I have no idea why Roll wants 3,000 Zenny to subscribe to a newspaper, and then 25,000 for a new TV. H how can you even have newspaper and TV? You live out of your flying ship. Where does the reception come from? Where do you get delivered newspaper from? Well, anyways... In that storage room is the broken motor, which is the second piece of the vacuum arm. I'm gonna spoil that right away. And if you head back into the kitchen and check the refrigerator, you find this little gem. Uh, there are a bunch of other extra recovery items besides the energy canteen this time around, and the picnic lunch is one of them. It's very nice to have that constantly respawning, because every time you use it, there's a new one right there. All for the price of 5,000 zenny and, well, actually 7,000 after you repair the living room and stuff. One thing, though, don't try to make all a bunch of money by selling the picnic lunches because not only do they make you 25 zenny apiece, which is not that much at all, every time you sell one, Roll hates you more. So now we have a couple of special weapons, thank goodness. We have the vacuum arm, which is the same as Legends 1, not that interesting. The machine gun arm, which is basically the machine buster from Legends 1, and the homing missile, which is a lot like the active buster from Legends 1. So a bunch of weapons are getting uh, renamed and repurposed. We're going to go ahead and use the machine gun arm for a little bit. Unfortunately, due to the change in the way ammunition works in Legends 2, the machine gun arm is not quite what it was in Legends 1. and. Um, it's not that uh, expensive to get the first weapon upgrade for all of the machine buster or uh, machine gun arms. I'll just call it the machine buster. It's not that expensive to upgrade it first, but the second level upgrades are a bit expensive. And like I said, weapon upgrades in Legends 2 are very, very expensive in the long run because the homing missile, it's actually really good because you don't you don't um, stop whenever you fire it, unlike the active buster, but goodness is it expensive. There's going to be a lot of zenny grinding if you choose to max out everything. Then again, the homing missile does get uh, infinite ammo if you max out its energy, and hey, first thing we see when we set down on this new island are uh, these suspicious looking Lego men. And so it seems that the pirates are already here. How they knew that the, uh, a key was going to be on this island in enough time to set up an ambush for Mega Man is uh, pretty beyond me. Because I, I don't know who really told us where all the keys were. Maybe those ancient dudes did. But how would the pirates know? Were they just spying on them the whole time? Oh well. Right, so... There is an optional dungeon on this island. There are three optional dungeons. They don't have anything story related inside them. They're just there to hide some extra items and money, which I think is pretty okay. Optional content is good. Legends 1 had all of those sub areas. And I'm exiting and re entering the dungeon here because this optional cavern, it has three different enemy layouts, and the game will randomly select one each time you enter. Now, the one I want has a fake treasure chest in the first room, so this is the setting that I want. Now, using the machine gun arm here, that, that was kind of embarrassing. I tried to circle strafe it, but it didn't quite work out so much. So the machine gun arm was being very strange here. You kind of saw that, um, I guess Mega Man's arm was kind of clipping into the wall a little bit, so it kind of caused him to just fire straight at the wall's collision. I don't know. But uh, we're going to move through this area a little bit. There are not there are a couple of enemy types that are new here, like these Frog Reaver bots. These guys are incredibly annoying if they surround you, because, you know, they can actually combo you, because if one of them touches you, then you're going to take damage a bunch of times until Mega Man falls over, which is a thing a lot of enemies can do now. 
But yeah, one full round of the machine gun arms shots, and yeah, I walked into the fake treasure chest after opening it. Don't hold forward when um, opening a treasure chest because it might be a fake one. Anyways, moving on. There are holes in the wall again, just like in Legends 1. And uh, not much to say about this uh, ruin. It looks kind of the same as the guild test area from the previous video. And the music is actually also from Legends 1. It's from that water dungeon. Alright, so in this room we have a tiny little snake reaver bot. Uh, still very easy to deal with. I don't know why I'm firing the machine buster at it. Kind of worth noting that the machine gun arm... Let's just stick with buster. The machine buster shots are actually tiny enough that they can miss the hitbox on the snake reaver bots completely. So you definitely want to stick to the buster for this one. And here we have a chest that is not fake. It has the bomb schematic. And when you open it, a bunch of frogs come out. I believe that happens regardless of which enemy layout the dungeon is using. Anyway, the bomb schematic doesn't make the Grand Grenade, unfortunately. I would love to have my Grand Grenades back, but they don't return in Legends uh, 2. And this enemy is very strange. This Golden Duck Reaver bot will only appear in the enemy layout that has the fake treasure chest in the first room, so that's why I wanted to do this. That's why I wanted this particular enemy layout, because it's the only way to get this enemy to appear. And we also have a second type of fake treasure chest. This one has legs. Anyways, the Golden Duck Rerot is very, very strange. It drops a grand total of uh, 10,000 zenny every time you kill it. And it's the only Reaver bot in the game to respawn if you enter and exit the room, so you can fight it as many times as you want for more zenny. Now, it does a pretty a pretty big amount of damage if you uh, get hit, so avoid that. However, for some reason, if you pick up and throw that Reaver bot and then just shoot him one time, he instantly dies. So, even in the early game, if you know that trick, then this is actually a very good place to grind for Zenny. Just make sure you have the correct enemy layout. Come over to this room, and you can uh, repeat kill that enemy as many times as you want. So we've got to backtrack a little bit to where the fork in the road was, because unfortunately, at the end of that path is a destructible wall, and we do not yet have the drill arm for destroying it. Spoiler alert, the drill arm is back. That was a pretty sick throw, if you ask me. <laughs> and they drop a but Since the shield reaver bots j drop a ton of health recovery items now, uh, they're pretty, uh, it's pretty useful to kill one if you're at low health. And they also drop um, items for recovering special weapon energy now, too. And I have no idea why I decided to go with a machine buster against the shield reaver bot. Yeah, it's really not working out very well, so I eventually just stopped and moved on. So we have a couple more of the explosive reaver bots. They drop quite a bit of zenny as well. And as we move on here, we will find another fork in the road, with a couple of frogs here for good measure. There's actually an elevator to a second floor in this dungeon, and if you take the elevator, it causes the enemy layout to change. Like, it'll be re-randomized. This is the this is actually the only dungeon in the game to use a randomized enemy layout. So yeah, I have no idea why they did it specifically for this dungeon. Maybe that was how they wanted to hide the golden duck reaver bot as a sort of Easter egg, I guess. Anyway, these um these barrier reaver bots, I guess that's what you would call them, they're a little bit more annoying now because they have that projectile attack, and if they get to use it, it's very difficult to dodge because of how tight the space is. Even if you tumble dodge, you'll probably be inside of the projectile's hitbox when you're standing back up again. So those enemies can be a little bit annoying, but here we are on the second floor. Now each of these optional dungeons has a refractor in it that you can obtain and sell for a big chunk of zenny. And um, they all have bosses guarding them too, but unfortunately all of the bosses in the optional dungeons are recycled story bosses, so we get to fight this guy again. And there's not even any obstacles for him to destroy, so yeah, this was a little strange. I did end up running out of ammo though. One thing I forgot to mention about this boss is that if you are out of his sight for enough time, he will eventually stop attacking and just wander around until he sees you again 
then he starts his attack patterns over again. Like, I'm not even sure what the point of that was, because as soon as you shoot him in the butt again, he'll just start attacking. Maybe that's a way to stay safe if you just want to flank him constantly. Oh well, he's dead again. We actually have a good shot at collecting all of his zenny drops. And in the next room is our prize. A big blue refractor. This one's called Refractor B. Yeah, all of the refractors are named after the license level required to actually get in the dungeon. You start the game with a B license, so this dungeon technically requires a B license to get into, but you'll never that'll never be a problem because you start the game with that license anyways and on both easy and very hard your license will that you start with will get you into any dungeon regardless so that's a little strange so the enemy layout has changed now but unfortunately these wall reaper bots are still here and now they're showing um now they're kind of showing their uh fangs i guess they're actually using the projectile attack a little bit they tend to do it more if you're behind them, although it can be very difficult to, to determine what their behind actually is. I could have worded that a little better. But as long as you're close to the, that kind of Reaver bot, they'll be, um, more, they'll be more inclined to try and block your path by using the wall attack instead of the uh, projectile attack. Then again, with so many of them that close to each other, getting close to one to force it to use the wall attack may cause the others to be close enough to use the projectile attack. So that's a little weird. Alright. So we've got shield reaver bots, we've got explosive reaver bots, we've got chests with, um... like, drops in the bucket, as far as any goes. There are a couple chests here with items in there. Now that one just has Zenny. I thought for a moment it would be the other development item you can get in this dungeon. This dungeon's got two development items. So yeah, like I said, the dungeons in Legends 2 tend to uh, give you more Zenny and less development items. The development items are really found more in shops. I mean, to make the Machine Buster and the Homing Missile, I had to buy two items out of the store. Would have been nicer to put them in this dungeon, actually. Like, you would feel more rewarded that way. But I suppose Zenny isn't that bad either. Alright, so this chest, I don't think it's a fake. Yeah, Mechanic Notes 2. That'll be used for making a weapon later. Like, after we do the first major main story dungeon, we'll probably have the items necessary to make something out of that item. Here we've got money. And Reaver bots still move, even when you're interacting with something. I don't remember if that was always the case in Legends 1. I think it was. But only if it was a hole in the wall, and not a chest. But I could be remembering wrong. Anyways, we found a destructible wall. Uh, this actually, this is actually the most pointless destructible wall ever, because as we see by looking at the map, if we were to blow through this wall, we would just end up in the room where the Golden Duck Robot was. So, I don't really know what the point of the destructible wall was, just to introduce you to the idea of destructible walls, maybe? But we'll have to backtrack to get out of the dungeon now. Go and see if any of our items are able to be developed. Spoiler alert, they aren't. But I do want to switch to the homing missile in preparation for the games first. Well, not the first, but there's a boss coming up soon. I mean, we just did see all of those surf bots running around outside the island's village. So I suppose it's only... Oh yeah, did I mention that those uh, reefer bots in that room just now? They walk if, they're, uh, if they see you, but they're too close to you. And just now, that was an example of the Frog Reaver bot comboing you, so you've got to be careful not to run right into them. But there's actually a weapon coming up soon that will deal with that enemy very efficiently. But first, we're going to go and get the homing missile now and see if we can upgrade it at all. The homing missile is still very, very expensive. Probably doesn't look like it, though, if you see what the first uh, upgrades for it are. But it's still a really good weapon, the homing missile. This early in the game, especially. So we're going to switch to it. 
An improving attack costs 10,000 zenny for the first upgrade, and then 120,000 zenny for the second. Well then, that escalated rather quickly, didn't it? Maybe that's a way of gatekeeping the player so that they can't, like, have this stupidly overpowered weapon this early in the game, but I really do think Roll is actually kind of demanding with how much money she asks for. Like, how much money does she think I get in those dungeons? I haven't even sold the refractor yet. Almost as if she were demanding all this money so that she could upgrade your weapon and then profit for her own benefits. Uh, yeah, whatever. So coming up is uh, another boss that is kind of a tough one. Uh, unlike the previous boss, which was the one on Forbidden Island, I mean, not the one in the ruins. The one in the ruins was easy. But unlike the Forbidden Island boss, this upcoming boss is very difficult to dodge and does a lot of damage rather than just being a really long fight. The blue fellow here! You've got the electronic jammer set up, right? Yes, Miss Klein. Let's see, the voice synthesizer is all set. Okay, begin Mega Man Special Plan 3. Do you think it will work? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But that doesn't mean we won't try. Yes, Miss Klein. <laughs> all right then, let's have some fun with Mega Man. Also, Mega Man equips his special weapons for cutscenes now. Hello. Long time no see, Mega Man. <laughs> I had a feeling I might run into you here. You're looking, looking as, as good, good as, as ever. ever. Well, well, as good as, as you can, can, considering how that good for nothing blonde treats you. What you mean? When I ran into Miss Blondie, she told me all sorts of things. Like how she's glad she doesn't have to go out on digs with you. Do you think that's fair? She gets to relax while you run around getting shot at. Don't you think that's a little strange? Well, I, uh... Wait, wait there's, there's more. more. Haven't you ever noticed that she's keeping some of the money you give her for weapons development for herself? She's skimming off the top and you don't even realize it. What? Skimming? She makes you all sorts of equipment and weapons, right? Do you really think it costs that much? You really are sick, aren't you? She was showing off how much money she saved by stealing from you. Ro would never say those kinds of things. How can you be so sure? You can't judge a book by its cover. She might look sweet and innocent, but how do you know what she's really like? <laughs> Looks like it's working. Who'd have thought? Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't find out about that, Mega Man. What? Roll? But I guess it's too late to try to hide it now that Tron told you. Don't worry about me. You don't need to come back. You could team up with Tron. Uh, roll? What? I don't want him either. Well, me. If he gets on his hands and knees and begs me, I might consider it. You really don't care if I have him? Me? No, not at all. But, but... Right, just wait till I get through with him. Wait, so you are going to kill him? I thought you were in love with him. Oh well. So one of the reasons this boss is difficult is because of the two arms in front of her. If you destroy these, you eliminate one of her attacks, but as you can see, it ate a good amount of my special weapon ammo. Now, the homing missile is definitely recommended for this, purely for damage output. Her attacks do a lot of damage, especially if the bullets decide to combo you, which they can. Like on this next uh, attack right here, yeah. The bullet spray from her back is difficult to dodge because you have to get into the correct sweet spot in order to circle strafe her. Because, you know, the spray is so effective at hitting you because they don't aim directly at you. It's not like the frontal cannon. Oh, and as you can see, some of the objects in the environment here are destructible. And of course, if the town takes damage, guess who has to pay for it? <clears throat> Anyways, for the spinning attack, I usually just get into a good rhythm of jumping in order to avoid it. One attack that you're actually not going to see here is if you are far away from her, the hatch on the top opens up and she starts shooting bombs at you. I didn't think it was that noteworthy, so I didn't force her to use it. And yeah, the bullet spray 
with, on the spinning attack is actually weird. It's almost like a shoot -em up. Like I'm playing some kind of weird Toho game. Anyway, this boss is called the Hunter Crab, or the Jagd Crab. It's German, again. They're, they're sticking to German robot names. The interesting thing about this boss is that in the spin-off game, The Misadventures of Tron Bon, the Japanese version came with a demo for Legends 2. This boss was the boss of the demo, so that's interesting. Anyway, as you can see, I've been forced to use my recovery item already. And of course, there's dialogue in boss battles too. This is the desperation move. And um, I was actually very scared here because it's very um, tricky to avoid her hitbox, but I... Or maybe it just looks tricky to avoid her hitbox, but this was very scary. I thought for sure I would get killed. I was at 1 HP for the rest of the fight. All because I forgot to refill my energy canteen. But then I unloaded her missile, my missiles into her and I won. I knew you'd never say things like that. Say things like what? Are you okay, Mega Man? You didn't get hit in the head or anything, did you? Guess what's for dinner, Mega Man? It's your favorite, pizza. Really? It's been a while since we had that. Uh-huh. I even managed to find some pepperoni. Oh, I can't have pizza you without pepperoni. Okay? Right. It was a good idea, but it looks like their faith in each other can't be broken. Look at him. Talking with her like they don't have a care in the world. Made a fool of me again. You little... you... What is it, Mega Man? Oh, nothing. Let's go. What was the matter, Miss Tron? I said let's get out of here. So yeah, that boss can be scary, but at least it's not that long. Although, ending it with only one hit point makes me scared for what's going to happen on the inevitable, very hard playthrough. Yeah, definitely another boss that stops a lot of playthroughs prematurely. Anyways, we can explore the rest of the island now, and we're actually just going to pick up one important item that is in this pot over here. I don't really know how anyone is supposed to find it, but it's the broken drill. So combine that with a heavy duty gear we picked up in the sulfur bottom and we can now make the drill arm. And the drill arm is one of the... it is amazing how much more powerful it is in Legends 1. It actually resembles its Tatsunoko vs. Capcom appearance in terms of attack power. Which is really weird to say about what's supposed to be a utility item and not really an actual weapon. But I am glad to get some extra use out of it. In Legends 2, there are a couple of overpowered weapons and a couple of really awful weapons. Fortunately, the homing missile and the drill arm are on the powerful side. Anyways, I'm going to go and get yet another picnic lunch from that refrigerator because it really does respawn instantly. Ah. <sighs> You'll also find that the drill arm is really inexpensive to upgrade. I don't even think it tops 10,000 zenny. And, you know, just one kill on that gold duck reefer bot and you'll have 10,000 zenny straight away. Unless you're on very hard mode. You know, I bet Mega Man's gonna walk through the door and Roll's gonna be all, Mega Man, what's with all of the scratches on you? You look like you almost died. And then Mega Man says, I did almost die. I'm glad you noticed. All right, so what does it cost to upgrade this thing? 1,000 for the first attack upgrade, 2,000. So that's 6,000 for attack power and for energy. 
see, uh, 4,500, so just over 10,500, and you can't upgrade anything else, unfortunately. The drill arm's uh, extended range is the reason why it's so good as a weapon now, but we're gonna save, and, um, and then next time we'll actually tackle the dungeon where the key is. So until next time...